Welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about effective access time. Effective access time, or the average time per access in memory hierarchy. What is exactly the effective access time, EAT? The effective access time measures the performance of hierarchy memory. It's also called average time per access. EAT is a weighted estimate using the heat ratio and relatively access time of the memory hierarchy. Since the different memory has a different level of the cache, and if one level can be found, and then you do not need to looking for the another level of the cache. If you cannot find in this level, and then you can looking for the the higher level of the cache to find your data. So that is based on the heat ratio to find estimate the time. There are two options of the hierarchy. One is in parallel to access cache memory to reduce cost of the time. When data is needed from the cache, there are two options for retrieving the data. The CPU is going to start the access to look at the cache and at the same time to start another access to looking for another level of the, the cache simultaneously. So that is called parallel. If the data is found in the cache, the access another level of the memory is going to automatically terminate. So there is a no cost for the, the overlap. If the data not found in the cache, the access another level of memory is already started. So this overlap simultaneously uh, access reduce the cost of the time. That is uh, increase the performance. Another way is called sequential. It's going to check cache first, if not found, and then begin to retrieve data from another uh, level of the memory. This sequentially access is going to be going to increase the time cost. For example, if hit the cache does not found and then begin to find the data from another level. So every time you have to hit the cache first. So the access cache time is always need to be counted. Here's a formula for calculating effective access time. N means number of the level of the memory, uh, L1, L2. Uh, Ti is total time needed to access data in the level memory I. Uh, Hi is a heat ratio of the level memory I. Uh, EAT, that is effective access time. This is the formula, the heat ratio multiple that level of the memory uh, access time plus the one minus heat ratio. So the rest of the uh, heat ratio multiple the time penalty. That means a uh, missing penalty is amount of time required to retrieve data once you miss in the cache. So whatever you missed here, and then you try to find the information in the rest of the uh, memory is going to be used the uh, time penalty that is a missing penalty. Okay, let's look at the example. Uh, here we have example one. Uh, assuming there is the one level of the cache and one main memory. So this is a two uh, level of the hierarchy. One is the cache, another is the main memory. The cache access time is 10 nanoseconds. The heat ratio is 99%. And then the main memory access time is 200 nanoseconds. In the sequential access scenario, let's look at the uh, EAT. So this is the formula. Uh, effective access time, heat ratio, multiple the, the cache access time plus the rest of the heat ratio plus the penalty. Okay, in our case, our cache heat ratio is 99%, so dot 99. 
the time to access cache is a 10 nanosecond. So this is a cache hitch. And then plus 1 minus 99. So the rest of hit ratio multiple the since we are assuming sequential access. So initially 10 nanosecond to access cache 5. There is no data. And then we are going to access the main memory plus main memory plus 200 nanoseconds. Okay, this is cache missing scenario. This is cache. And then uh, multiple together. This is 9.9 .9 nanoseconds. And then uh, here, add or everything together more. That is 2.1. So the total number of the effective access time is 12 nanoseconds. Okay. Okay, let's look at the second example. In this, in this example, we are assuming two levels of the cache and plus a main memory system. The level one cache access time is 10 nanoseconds. The heat ratio is 90%. The level two cache is 20 seconds, 20 nanoseconds. The heat ratio is 80%. And then the main memory access time is 200 nanoseconds. So the formula at here is effective access time, the cache heat. So that is the level one heat ratio and multiple the level one time. Then plus the rest of the heat ratio. Since this is the 90%, one minus 90% is the, the 10%. So, so after we hit the level one and then left 10% of the time either going to access level two or going to access the main memory. So the here is one minus Heat ratio level one is going to 10%. You see here, bracket, this whole section is going to uh, use this 10% time. Within this 10% time, the level two access here heat ratio is 80%. So 80% multiple level one and plus level two. Since we are assuming this is sequential, so always plus the time in the level one. Well. Level two heat ratio multiple level one time plus level two time. If this one does not fight in the level two, we are going to hit the main memory. So the main memory going to be one minus heat ratio of the level two. This, this is the rest of the heat ratio for the main memory. So we still need to check the level one if not, go to check level two, level two not, and then we are going to access the main memory. So this is the main memory. This is a level two. This is the level one. So here the level one cache hit, and then this is cache missing all the penalty time. So we put this data in here, 90% hit ratio, multiple 10 nanoseconds, that's going to be nine. And rest of the heat ratio, one minus 90%, that is going to 10% of time, we are going to either in level two, or we are going to have to access the main memory. So this is the level two heat ratio, 80%. 80%, we still need to access level one time plus level two time. This is the level two cache access time. And then the uh, rest of the heat ratio. After this 80%, the, we left 20% of the time going to access the main memory. So main memory still need to access level one, check, back level two, check, if missing, and then access the main memory. So uh, put all this data in, so we calculate this is 10 multiple upon uh, is nine. This is uh, one minus 0.9 is 10%. And here is the 30 and 0.8. Uh, 30 multiple 0.8, that is 24. This is 20%, it's 230. 230 multiple 0.2, that is 46. So add everything together. The total effective access time is 16 nanoseconds. Okay, this is two examples for the how to calculate effective access time.
Okay, I'm stop at here. Thank you very much. See you next time.